Hello Will and GXC and welcome to our last assembly of this half term. I don't know if you felt to you as if this term has been quite quick or quite long, maybe either, or this half term rather. And I imagine you're looking forward to next week. Maybe some of you are just going to be chilling out at home, perhaps some of you are going to visit friends and family that maybe you've not seen for quite some time. Or maybe some of you are going to get a short break away. Whatever you do, I hope that you have a really good half term. Now I want us to think back to the assembly last week. So I said we've kind of got to the end of the Easter stories, but kind of not because they go throughout the year in all that Christians believe and all that Christians think during the year as well. But we had that story of ascension when Jesus ascended back to heaven to be with his father. And then last week we thought about the story of Pentecost. And we thought about, I've got my beautiful dove again. We thought about when Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be with those first disciples. Ooh, sorry about that. Can you remember anything about the story? Can you remember the flames that rested on those disciples' heads? Can you remember the wind that came through and just kind of woke people up to what was going on? And can you remember them all speaking in different languages, so many different languages, and people were able to understand different languages? So I've got a question for you today, and my question for you is, so what? Now, if you ask that at school, I don't know whether your teachers would be happy or not, but I'm going to ask you today, so what? And I'm asking you, so what, in asking you, what difference did their sending of the Holy Spirit make to those first disciples and to those first Christians? Maybe you have some thoughts on that. Well, one of the things that I think it made a difference to, and I've got my globe here, which obviously shows all the countries. It's not particularly up to date, so it may not be up to date in terms of names. And I talked to you about how before Jesus went back to be with God, his father, he asked his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations. So go and tell people in the whole world about him. I don't know how far you have travelled in your life. Some of you may be very well travelled. Some of you may well have family in other countries. Some of you may never have gone beyond, much beyond Yaxley. And none of that is right or wrong. I've travelled a little way, but not very far. Just seeing if I can find the places on here that I've travelled to. My geography is not very good. So I've gone from the United Kingdom, which is there. And I've gone to Norway, which is just above it. Norway is beautiful. I have been from um, England again, and I've been to France. And you probably know what I've been to France for, um, of course, to go to Disneyland Paris. I've been to Germany and I've been to Holland, but I haven't been much further afield than that in my travels. I'm quite a home bird um, and I like to be at home. So Jesus said to his disciples, go and tell everybody in the whole world about me. What a crazy job description that would be. You've got to go in the whole world and tell them about Jesus. Now, remember that our story was 2000 years ago. And so they didn't have planes. They didn't have buses. They didn't have the travel that we have today. And so those first disciples set off on foot a lot of the time or on animal to go to those places where they felt the Holy Spirit was leading them to go to, to tell people about Jesus. What a huge job that is. And I said to you before, that's a job that we as Christians are still doing today. We're going and letting people know about who Jesus is and the so what. So we know him. What difference does that make? So we've got that side of things. The fact that we know those first disciples travelled and went out and told people about Jesus. So, so big had been the impact of meeting Jesus, spending time with him and the Holy Spirit coming, that they just felt in themselves they had to go and do this. Compelled would be a really good word. So they felt drawn in themselves to go and do this work. But there's something else as well. And we go back to our dove and our Holy Spirit. Now a different book in the Bible talks about the gifts of the Spirit. So when we have the Holy Spirit living in us, which is God living in us, we should produce, be producing some really good gifts. 
Now I'm not talking about the kind of presents that you have wrapped up for a birthday party or lovely presents that you might get at Christmas or your birthday. Not that kind of gift. But these are gifts that are given to us as Christians to go and use with other people. And so the book of Galatians in the Bible tells us that there is fruit of the Spirit and the fruit are the good things that come from the Holy Spirit. And they are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. That's quite a lot of fruit and quite a lot of challenges to us as a Christian to live by those values and to use those gifts in our life. So let's have a think about them. I've got some different symbols to help us think about them. So I've got a wooden heart, first of all, and this is beautifully soft. Sometimes I sit with it if I'm praying for people and have it in my hands. And the heart is a symbol of love. It's the thing that we think about on Valentine's Day, we think about love, but we remember as well that God is love, that Jesus is love, that the Holy Spirit is love, that that trinity of people, Father, Son and Holy Spirit is love and that they love each one of us. And so if we've been shown that love, then part of our work as Christians is to go and show that love to others, to care for other people, to look out for them. And for those that may be sad, maybe some people are having a difficult day today, show them some kindness and some care. So the first gift of the Spirit that's given to us is love. The second one, I'm going to show you the other face first of all, and it says, don't be sad. Okay, good message for you today. And the other side says, smile, Jesus loves you. Okay, so we're thinking about joy. And joy can be something that's really hard to find because we might have those days when, oh my goodness, it's rainy again, we can't go out for playtime, oh, it's a subject I don't really like today. All those kind of things can just make us feel a little bit, maybe a little bit more sad. But we're told that the Holy Spirit gives us joy. And that joy is within us. It doesn't mean to say we've got to constantly walk around with a beaming smile on our face. We have to know what's going on around us and act appropriately. But the Holy Spirit gives us joy so that we can give joy as well. Because joy is found in every situation of life if we look for it somewhere along the way. So even on that darkest and drabbest of days, we can find joy because we have the Holy Spirit living in us and with us. Okay, so we've done love, we've done joy. So love, joy, peace. And the sign language of peace is that there are a few signs for that actually, because it's about, oh, just stilling everything and calming everything. And our Holy Spirit dove is also a sign or a picture of peace. The dove is often used in a sign of peace. Now we thought before about what does peace mean and we thought that peace doesn't mean that there is no noise. It doesn't mean to say that there's no difficulties in life. But it's that even when we have these things, we know peace within us. So we know stillness within us because we know that we can trust in God and we know the Holy Spirit is in us and we know that Jesus went to the cross for us. So peace is about an inner peace, really. It's about being calm and content, really, in every circumstance of life. Again, whether you're having a really good day or whether today is one of those oh, days and it's just a hard day to get through. So we've got love, we've got joy, we've got peace. So love, joy, peace, and we've got patience. Now I had to think, what do I do for patience? And you might be able to hear it because it's quite loud, but I've got a clock patient clock that sits above um, my, my study desk because often we can be impatient because we want to get on to the next thing or we're looking forward to the, the school holidays or we're looking forward to the weekend or oh, if tonight could just come I'm going to be doing x y or z and sometimes we have to be patient sometimes we have to wait for things and that can be really frustrating but do you know we learn a huge amount in that waiting difficult as it is. We learn more about who God is and that everything happens in his time. Again, that can be really frustrating for people because we like things to happen when we want them to happen. 
But sometimes we just have to be patient. We just have to wait and know that God has got everything in his hands, including the timings of when things will happen. So we've got love, we've got joy, we've got peace, we've got patience. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Now, I got this for kindness. Now I know I've shown you this before. And it's got hands across a cross in a couple of places and they're holding each other. It's a bit like if I did that and I was holding hands with somebody else. And to me, this cross shows so many things, but I think it shows kindness and care. And, you know, we all need kindness. We all need to be kind to one another because we don't always know what's going on in somebody else's life. We don't necessarily know that someone's not having a great day. We don't know that something's not right with them. We don't know maybe someone doesn't feel so well today always. And so it's always good to be kind to people. And that might mean lots of different things. And it often means putting ourselves second and thinking about that person. And so I love that picture of those crossed hands as kindness, a kind of reaching out and how can I help you? What do you need today? And sometimes that can be in words. Sometimes it can be in things that we do. So love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. And then we've got goodness. Now again, I think I used this the other week with the shepherd and the sheep to talk about one of our stories and we think about Jesus being the shepherd and we call him the good shepherd because we know that Jesus is good we know that there was no evil in Jesus nothing bad at all he didn't ever do anything wrong so Jesus was good he was goodness if we need to look at somebody who is good that we want to follow then Jesus is an amazing example of that on someone who we can follow who was good so love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness and I bought my wooden cross for that one it's called a holding cross and it's something that you can hold in your hand when you're praying a bit like my heart it's very similar it's very soft and when you're a Christian you have to be faithful and the Bible tells in one place that we walk by faith and not by sight because we have to trust in God for everything those first disciples had to trust in God that he would do all the work they needed to, once Jesus had gone back to heaven, that God would help them to get to those places all around the world they needed to go to. And they were being faithful to what Jesus had asked them to do. And that's what Christians still want to do today. We still want to be faithful to what God is asking us to do. And what God is asking you to do will be different to what God asked me to do, because we go back to those gifts and skills again, those fruits of spirit that are in us. But other things are there as well that make us who we are. So we have to be faithful, we have to be true to ourselves in what we believe in, but also true to what we believe in. And we have to be aware of what that is and how we follow it. So love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. I got to gentleness. And I've got this sitting above my desk as well. And you might have seen these figures before, they're willow tree figures. And I love this one, I don't know if you can see it. But the hands of one fit over the hands of another. And this was given to me by an amazing group that I was part of several years ago when I left to remind me that they would continue to pray for me. And so I love looking at this and thinking about this as that fruit of the spirit. So we think love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, the gentleness of caring for others. The gentleness of being there for others and the gentleness of being alongside others. I'm going to put that up there so I don't break it. And my last one is a bar of chocolate because the last one is self-control. And sometimes we can think, I've got a whole bar of chocolate, I'm going to eat it all in one go. Of course, I wouldn't ever do that, but I might on a, on a really bad day. But we have to think about having self-control and that's in lots of different ways. That's around the things we speak, the words that come out of our mouth. Do we say the right things that encourage others? It's about the things that we think in our heads. Are we thinking good thoughts about our friends and those around us? 
And it's about our hearts. Are our hearts good? Have they got that goodness of Jesus? Because we're asking him to help us. Because we can have that self-control when we know that we've got control over these things. And there'll be days we might have a little bit too much that we should have had. But on the whole, self-control is really important because we could go out and do lots of things that we shouldn't. But our self-control within us helps us to know the right things to do and how much of things to do as well. So we've got love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Nine different things that are fruits of the Spirit and help us to know how to live. And answer that so what question. So what difference does the Holy Spirit make? Well, if you are using all these gifts of the Spirit, then they'll be seen in you through what you do, through what you say, through what you're thinking, through how you act. These things will run through that continuously. And so when we think about that gift of the Holy Spirit, which is still a gift for us today, we can remember that we have that gift with us. And if someone's been a bit challenging to you today, maybe you want to show a little bit of kindness or gentleness. If you really want to go and eat that whole bar of chocolate, maybe you need to use a little bit of self-control. We can use all these different things throughout our lives. I thought you'd just take a moment and think, which one of these, or maybe more than one, would I really like to work on? So let's think about them again. We've got love. We've got joy. We've got peace. We've got patience. We've got kindness. We've got goodness. We've got faithfulness. We've got gentleness. And we've got self-control. And so as you think about which one of those do you think would be really helpful for you to, to ask God to help you with today, let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit and that we have the Holy Spirit living in us today, which is you living in us. As we think about all those good gifts, those fruits of the Spirit, help us today as we go around school to show those to others in our classrooms, in our break times, in all the things we do, and in our homes and communities as well. And help us to want to care for these gifts and to grow them and to show them and share them with others. Amen. It's been lovely to join with you in this half term. I hope you have a wonderful half term break. Whatever you are doing, enjoy it. And I look forward to being with you again in next half term. Take care and God bless Will and Bye.